Follow the veins to the altar and chant. What did that say? Harvest the scripture. Compose it into a blood song. I think it said harvest the scripture, compose it into a love song? The onboarding program was established because Fixit pioneers often experience memory issues after <laughs> planet fall. If you are experiencing nosebleeds, nausea, existentialism, existentialism. or an scalp, there is no need for concern. <laughs> this should pass within five to seven work days. Oh my God. Next objective, complete hub upgrade six. I love it. Welcome everybody to Satisfactory 1.0. I'm the Bearded OG and I am very excited to get started with this new series here on the channel, uh, playing the game. Uh, it's funny that they still have the patch update 8 patch notes showing over here. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know. Um, anyway, so yeah, I spent uh, a little bit of time this morning, uh, you know, before the release came out, uh, just watching the dev stream and uh, just getting all hyped for the game. So it's really awesome. All right, we are going to start uh, with a new save, of course. So let's click on new game. Um, we are going to start in the northwest corner of the Dune Desert. If you watched my last um, episode of the series, not in, not including the montage, uh, I, I did a little tour of what my plans are. So that is what we're going to do. And we're going to call this um, <clears throat> Bearded 1.0. That's the name of our game. Uh, I am not going to skip the intro. I want to start from the very beginning and see what all, you know, they've added new. Uh, my understanding is that the uh, that Ada will have some new lines even doing the, uh, you know, during the tutorial. So that should be a lot of fun. And um, as far as advanced game settings goes, we are going to enable those. Uh, but I have, I kind of have some rules that I follow when I, uh, you know, when I do this. Primarily, I do this for flight mode to showcase things and uh, also no build cost when I'm making blueprint designs. Um, those, those are the main things that I use. I, I don't use any of this stuff at all, you know, for the actual normal playthrough. Okay. Uh, none of that stuff we're going to enable and uh, we're not going to disable the spiders because the spiders are cool, scary and cool. Okay. So let's go back to there and um, let's start the game. Here we go. It's going to be fun. Uh, recommended for advanced pioneers. Oh, I've uh, speaking of which, I for, for those of you who are watching me for the first time, I've got about a thousand hours in this game now. Um, in update eight, I got almost all the way to the end, but we just ran out of time. Uh, so I, I'm not, you know, I'm certainly not the world's best satisfactory player, but I, I've been playing it for a thousand hours, so you know that's kind of my experience level. And of course, you know, there's a lot of new stuff with 1.0 that will have to be, you know, uh, get get used to. We'll put it that way. Um, so, yeah, all right, let's do this. I don't know if the opening sequence with the drop pod, no, that's going to be exactly the same or not. It looks like maybe it will be. Separation from main transport complete. Group A delivered to Calistian region. Oh, that's different. All pioneers functional, initiating dispersion. Attention, pioneer. I am Ada, your personal instance of the artificial directory and assistant. Welcome to the Fixit Incorporated Save the Day program. A Fixit pioneer has three core assignments. Construct. All pioneers must follow Fixit guidelines and instructions when constructing any building. Automate. Every pioneer is responsible for setting up and managing efficient pipelines, outposts, and power infrastructure. Explore and exploit. Fix-it selected planets are rich with resources suitable for direct use or further investigation. Stay within your designated. And that is why the world is counting on pioneers like you. Whoa, that was Fix weird. Fix-it. Short-term solutions to long-term problems. All right, yeah, that was, that was a little different. <laughs> that was awesome. Looks like the build uh, tool looks a little different, too. entry in three, two, one. Beginning arrow assist. Arrow assist. Drag within acceptable parameters. Descent phase begun. Decelerating. Deploying parachute. Deploying backup parachute. 
Uh oh. Skipping parachute. <laughs> oh shit. Landing phase begun. Skippy parachute. Retro propulsion. Oh, I love it. The hell with the parachute. We don't need no stinking parachute. <laughs> oh, this is great. Touchdown. Planet fall complete. Drop pod integrity nominal. Omni situational exploration suit nominal. Pioneer. Acceptable. It's nice to be acceptable. Did they change that? No, maybe not. Maybe it is the same. Congratulations. You are the third in your region to survive planet fall. Welcome to Massage 2, A, B, B, in the binary system of Akicha. Akicha. Loading objective based introduction. Begin onboarding. First contact safety tool supplied due to presence of alien megafauna. Megafauna. Adhere to fix it procedure and equip the fix it ink Xeno Zapper before leaving the drop zone. Okay. We can do that. Next objective. Dismantle the drop pod. Fix it incorporated as cost effective and efficient. We do not waste. We the drop waste. pod will be recycled to construct the first stage of the habitat and utility base, often referred to as the hub. Okay. Here we go. Next objective. Use the resource scanner to find and collect additional iron to be able to build the hub. If you cannot find iron, be assured scans of the planet have revealed sufficient iron sources. Okay, so let's scan for iron. Uh, is Ada done for now? Okay, so um, the the nodes in this area that we're going to start in have not changed, except for there's one Katerium node that has actually been upgraded, um, but uh, the rest of them are all the same as they were in early access. So far, the chain, the new changes are cool, though. Um, all right, so we we could gather some of this stuff here, but I think I'm gonna wait on that just because of inventory. So, oh man, they got a big. Is that a big guy? Yeah, they got a big guy guarding that now. I don't. I don't think there was a big guy before. Interesting. Okay, so we'll come back here later, um, just because I don't have a lot of inventory space right now. <laughs> Uh, so I, I don't want to be carrying a lot of extra stuff. Uh, but we are headed, uh, running over this way. Now, our first base, uh, actual factory that we're going to build, which is going to be our iron production factory, uh, the plan for that is to build that over here by this waterfall. Um, so, but we're not going to, we're not going to do that yet. What is this? Uh, we do need Katerium. Let's go ahead and grab this. Unknown metal collected. This metallic element is showing properties similar to those in group 11 on the periodic table, such as high conductivity and malleability. Store this potential resource for later use. Right. Okay. Uh, that looked a little bit different too, actually. So yeah, our plan is to build uh, our iron production factory in front of the waterfall with the waterfall kind of as the backdrop. And we're going to build our first a coal power plant up against that cliff over there because there's some water over there that we can use for the water extractors. So that's the plan, but here's the thing um, that I want to let everybody know. Um, it is my plan to grind all the way to tier four um, before we even start building a factory. And the reason for that is because... Um, before we uh, before we pick up that sloop, uh, the reason for that is because uh, I want to have uh, Mark II miners and uh, Mark III belts in order to to do the build you know the way that I want to. I don't want to have to come back later and upgrade it. Um, and so yeah, that's the plan. Um, and as usual, at the beginning of a satisfactory playthrough, I'm not going to be too terribly concerned with being neat. But once we start building 
uh, the actual factory, then we will be very neat. Uh, plus, it's going to be easier for us to do that in terms of like 90 degree belts with the new changes. Follow the veins to the altar and chant. What did that say? Follow the something to something in chat? All right, so these things still do talk to us. Interesting, but they say something different. Let's see what Ada says. The Summer Sloop was named after Marie Somerville, co-founder of Fix-It and head of its R&D department. There are many theories about the origin of this shape and why this symbol mathematically resembling a Mobius strip has found its way into both human and extraterrestrial culture. Thankfully, you don't need to know any of these theories to be a pioneer. <laughs> Store it for later use. Okay. Fun fact. The planet you are on was found and named during a planet spotting event Marie hosted called Marie's Awesome Scientific Search of the Avant-Garde Exoplanets. <laughs> okay. I love it. This story stuff's going to be really fun. Uh, what's this? Morgatarium? Sure. We'll pick this up. Yeah, this looks a little bit different. These... These outcroppings used to be kind of more pointy, I guess. All right, let's do our take out our first hog and grab our first barrel nuts. Potential edible collected. Eating it and surviving does not count as a valid field test and does not generate enough data for fix it to make an informed decision. Store this potential resource for later use. Samples of new alien species acquired. Notable features are blunt teeth, suggesting it is herbivorous, and a thickly plated skull and spine, suggesting it is proficient at inflicting and receiving blunt force trauma. Yes, it Preserve is. Preserve the remains for later study. Nice. Okay. So basically, Ada is telling us to hang on to this stuff because we can research it later in the molecular something or other called the MAM. It's our re basically our research station. Uh, we need to start picking up bio uh, material too, so let's start collecting that. Uh, there's there's a trick that you can do where you, you know, basically constantly pick bushes, but I don't know if that still works in in 1.0, and I don't actually remember exactly how to do it anyway, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, all right, so let's see. We're going to have some iron and we're going to have a plasma spitter. Let's go ahead and take him out because we're going to need his giblets for research as well. Samples of unknown alien species acquired. Their weaponized plasma is most likely stored as a stable chemical substance in an organ close to their mouth and only turns volatile when exposed to one of the chemical elements in the air. Preserve the remains for later study. That's cool that they explain those a little more. Okay, let's grab some iron ore here. Next objective, use the build gun to construct the hub. Iron is a base component necessary for all near future progress, so ensure you build the hub close to iron sources. Fix it does not pay by the kilometer. <laughs> Okay, um, we're also going to grab this power slug over here. So let's deal with this hog first. And what is this? More? Oh, this is copper. Okay, yeah, we're going to need that too. All right, Ada doesn't have anything to say about copper. There's uh, some limestone down there that we'll also grab. Come at me, bro. All right, let's grab our first power slug. This semi-slug species seems to persist entirely through absorbing and storing energy from its surroundings. Studying this could provide new methods for improving fix-it production line efficiency. Store this potential resource for later use. Nice. Oh, they changed the water. Oh, this looks really good. Very cool. It looks a lot nicer than it used to. All right, cool. Let's get uh, our first uh, pale berry. 
potential edible collected, if consumed before authorized is compatible with the human digestive system by Fixit, the consumer is responsible for any and all consequences. <laughs> Store this potential resource for later use. Gotcha. Okay. Let's get some limestone. Okay, it has nothing to say about limestone. All right, let's start picking um, some biomass here. So the way that the underbrush works in this game, how, how's my inventory doing? Okay. When you pick, um, you know, underbrush and branches off the ground and stuff like that, uh, they will respawn next time I think you load into the game or after a period of time or whatever. But if you cut down a tree like that tree, that will not respawn. So we're going to we're going to be really careful about wh what trees we cut down because I want to preserve the you know the natural beauty of this area. We're only starting here. We're not going to you know set up a, a big factory here. So when we're done, I want to leave the place in good shape so that we can come back at a later point in time and then just enjoy the the beauty of it, right? One of the things I love so much about this game, even though it's a factory building game, it's got one of the best best designed worlds in any video game ever that I've played. I just love the world so much, you know. It's just gorgeous. So, yeah. Okay, so let's see. We saw another hog over here. Uh, let's deal with him. We want to we get the, um, you know, all the giblets off of these guys because we're going to use them early on to get our first set of, of coupons from the awesome shop. So, all right, so we got some quartz and some sulfur. Yeah, we got a little bit more room. Let's grab both of these because we're going to need them. Unknown crystalline mineral collected. This mineral is composed of the same chemical elements as quartz and may yield similar industrial functions. Store this potential resource for later use. Okay. Unknown chemical element collected. This non-metallic and multivalent element seems to be present only in a solid state and exhibits a most pungent smell. It is fortunate fixit helmets are of such high quality. Store this potential <laughs> resource for later use. Alright, we have another hog here. Oh, let's turn our light on too. Okay, I hear something. I don't know if it's a a sloop or a Mercer sphere or a slug, but I think maybe that's up above us. So we'll worry about getting that later. Let's continue moving in this direction. Man, I'm so excited to play this game, you guys. <laughs> it's going to be so fun. I would have continued my update 8. Um, you know, save, but they made so many substantial changes to 1.0, both in terms of, you know, changing resource node locations, but also um, there's certain story elements that they said you wouldn't experience if you didn't start over, too, you know, so that's another reason why I just wanted to start over. And I think almost everybody is starting over anyway, you know, that plays this game. I mean, I don't know that for sure, but everyone that I know of, you know, like other YouTubers and so forth, uh, are all starting over. All right, let's see. Where am I at? Oh, I'm over this way. Man, I love this new water. It just looks so good compared to the old water. Be curious to see what deeper water looks like. Having all this biomass, um, we are starting to run out of space, but we'll get a storage box here uh, in a little bit. Okay, so this is where we're going to start and where we're going to more or less operate until we uh, get through Tier 4, uh, or at least mostly through Tier 4. So I'm going to also clear away all of this vegetation because we're going to build our hub right over up against this wall here. 
Uh, once you do, you know, put buildings down, that will prevent uh, respawning of, of foliage up to a certain distance. But if you remove the building, then it'll come back. Uh, so I just want to get it all out of here so we can actually use it, since it's not going to respawn while we have our stuff here. Let's go into our build menu, and we're going to grab the hub. And I want to put the hub this direction so that the... Oh, Mr. Bean, you're in the way. Uh, so that the biomass burners will be on the left. we got to wait for him to move. All right, dude. Sorry to do this, but you're in the way. <laughs> Get out of the way. Okay. Um, Yeah, I think this is the direction we want. I want a little bit of room behind it though um so we can put like the equipment shop and stuff like that so why don't we go right about there hub foundation built the hub terminal and crafting bench are only the humble beginnings of a successful fix-it pioneer but essential for the next steps of onboarding once finished the hub will function as your base of operations next objective complete hub upgrade one Okay, so uh, once we do hub upgrade one, we will be able to get a storage box, which which we need because we're getting really full. Oh, they looks like they changed some of these icons too. Like the sulfur looks different. Um, so uh, we should whoops, uh, we should only need five rods, I think, to do. Oh, this is different too. Look at this. Oh yeah, that looks neat. Uh, we need ten rods. Okay. So uh, we're going to be doing a lot of handcrafting in the early part of the game here. But, you know, as we're able, we'll, we'll also add automation uh, to what we're doing as well. Okay, so we'll select that milestone, pop the rods in there. Love the new sound effects, too. Hub upgrade one, storage and frame completed. Nice. Equipment like the portable miner can now be made in the workshop. Congratulations on completing your first milestone, the first of many providing access to new recipes and technologies for the Fix-It mission. Next objective, complete hub upgrade 2. Okay, so we're going to just store all of this stuff in here for now um, and just hang on to the things that we need. Uh, so for hub upgrade 2, uh, let's select that. So we're going to need rods and plates. So that means we're going to need some iron. And uh, we also need to make the equipment workshop, which also requires rods and plates. Uh, so now what we need to do is go get some iron. And there is an iron node, um, a limestone node, and a copper node over here. Oh, man, I missed my, <laughs> my blade runners. So as we run back and forth, which we're going to be doing several times in this area through the forest, we'll just pick biomass as we go. Um, let's go ahead and grab this blue slug here, too. Um, whoops. I didn't mean to do that. Where'd the other one go? There he is. Okay. Let's try this again here. All right, so we have a normal iron node here. Um, we will have a uh, limestone node back over that way, and then on the other side of that rock right there is a copper node. Oh, wow, look. They changed the look of the Mercer spheres. And this is the water now. Oh, man, this is so beautiful. There's the copper there. See if it says anything. Nope, doesn't appear to say anything. Harvest the scripture. Compose it into a blood song. I think it said harvest the scripture, compose it into a love song. 
The astrobiologist Dr. D. M. Mercer was the first to recognize the presence and probable nature of these alien artifacts. These chain melted state spheres are named in his honor. Each sphere emits a unique signal and will require study to determine local application, store it for later use. Oh shit! Nice, okay. All right. Um, later on, we're going to come back here and build our first little mini coal power plant when uh, we unlock coal. But tell you what, since we're since we're here, I'm going to grab um, a stack of limestone, a stack of copper, and a stack of iron. Let's go ahead and deal with this guy again. There we go. This is a normal limestone node. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to grab a, a stack of this. Okay. I actually grabbed two stacks of limestone just because it's a little further away. But we are going to have to run back and forth, like I said, a few times until we start getting conveyor belts and all that set up. Uh, one thing I noticed, too, while I was sitting there... Uh, mining that by hand is if you look uh, if I look in the inventory notice this Mercer sphere has like a little glitch effect that's really weird yeah see <laughs> it's the little things right okay let's grab some copper all right and then we will go over and grab ourselves some iron once we get back then to the hub and do the next upgrade. Um, well, oh, spiders. We need his giblets too for research. Samples of unknown alien species acquired. Initial data suggests these are predators, but notably they do not have a traditional mouth or eyes. There are, however, numerous cavities on their head which could fulfill a similar function. Preserve the remains for later study. Interesting. Okay, yeah, so let's grab um, a stack or two of iron as well, and then we'll head back to the hub. Okay, we have our stack of iron. I want to pick up um, several of these flowers, too, because we're going to use those as uh, biofuel until we get to the point where we can make actual biomass they have the same, assuming they haven't changed anything, of course, they have the same burn rate as wood, which is a little bit better than leaves. Kind of run through here and grab a bunch of this stuff. All right, so um, we need to, uh, we need to make the equipment workshop. So let's put that on the thingy here, and that means we're going to need some plates and rods. So let's make some iron. Uh, actually, hold on. Before we do that, I want to put stuff in here that we don't or, or, and or can't use at the moment, which is pretty much everything in here, except for the iron. Uh, we can't even do copper quite yet. Okay. So let's turn all of this iron ore into ingots first, because we're going to need to do that. Actually, no, on second thought, let's not do that quite yet. Um, let's get the workshop made and a couple of portable miners made first. So that way we can get them mining for us while we're, while we're doing other things. Okay, equipment workshop, we're going to put that right up against the wall here. And then um, let's make a portable miner. I want to make, see, what do you, you need two plates and four rods. Let's make more of those so we can put them on all of the nodes. Um, and that way we're not, you know, running back and forth any more than we'll, we need to. Oh, 
Okay, so we should have enough to make four more portable miners. I'm going to put two on the iron, one on the copper, one on the limestone. Very good. All right, let's run back and get that done. Got another spider. Come here, you bastard. Okay. Uh, do I hear another one skittering around? There's a, um, a swarm. Swarmer. Wait, is that what they call those things? Something like that. The bees. Most people just call them the bees. Okay, let's put this in our hands. Oh! We already have a second hand slot? That's new. Oh, cool. Okay. These things are cool. <laughs> All right, boys, get to work. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we didn't, uh, we never had a second hand slot in, at the beginning and early access. So that's a nice welcome change. We'll put that one there and we'll go put one on the limestone. Very good. All right. Let's head back through here, pick some more biomass up and we'll grab whatever iron the miners currently have. All right, we already got a little over a stack there. It's a beautiful thing. This is the biomass gathering mini game that everybody does at the start of Satisfactory. <laughs> Starting to run out of space here, but pretty soon we'll be able to start processing this biomass. Put that in there. Okay, so let's see. Now we need to get work on the next hub upgrade, so we need. 20 rods and 10 plates. Let's do it. Here we go. Hub upgrade two, power and shell completed. The smelter can turn raw ore such as copper and iron into ingots and the biomass burner generates power when fueled. Fun fact. Most of the native flora and fauna is compatible with Fixit technology. Fueling the biomass burner with inappropriate materials will result in deductions or even cancellation of your yearly bonus. <laughs> Next objective, complete hub upgrade three. Nice. Okay. Um, so now we have our biomass burner and we can make a smelter. Uh, so let's, let's get a, a few more iron ingots processed just so we have enough. Well, actually, we probably do have enough stuff for that. Um, so production smelter. Nope, we need four more rods. Okay. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna put the first smelter here because uh, we can only have one connection to this until we get power poles, which will, I think, come in the next uh, upgrade. Oh, we need uh, copper wire too. Okay, not a problem. Let's go ahead and grab the copper out of here. And we'll make some copper ingots. Make some wire. Um, actually, I think we're going to need a, some cable, too. Just a little bit. All right. Is that enough? Yes, it is. Here, let's pick this up. What was that noise? I don't know. Something happened. Did I get some kind of an achievement? Maybe. Okay, so we'll put the first smelter down here. It's not going to stay here. This is just temporary. And then we can hook that up to there. And we will grab uh, our flowers. 
Oh, we don't have flowers anymore. That's right. We don't have flowers anymore. Okay, so we're going to use wood then. I completely forgot about that. Because wood will burn a little bit longer. Oh, look at that. That's cool. That's new too. Now let's switch. Uh, set this to iron ingots and put all of the iron ore and this guy can start making ingots for us that's right we don't have flowers anymore um do we have the customizer yet nope doesn't appear to uh that'll unlock here in just a little bit i think okay good so while we're waiting for that to do its thing um i'm gonna go ahead and turn all of these copper ingots into uh, or copper ore into ingots and then we'll get working on the next milestone. Or hub upgrade, I should say. Very good. That's done. Let's see what we need for hub upgrade three. That's going to get us constructors, power poles, concrete, reinforced plates, and screws. Uh, so we'll select that. And then we need to make 20 copper wire. We need to make 20 rods. And 20 plates. Let's grab some more ingots out of here. And that's it. Put all that stuff in. Hub upgrade 3, interior furnishing completed. The constructor can produce simple parts and power poles allow for the expansion of the power grid. When you make the inevitable mistake, Fix-It's dismantling feature is designed to salvage all resources used during construction, in line with our zero-waste policy. We understand that Fix-It pioneers are only human, and thus prone to error. Next objective, complete hub upgrade 4. Interesting. So, there was some speculation that the Pioneer was maybe not not human but an android or something so they just told us that we are human how interesting uh we got a flushable toilet what oh we can put stuff in the toilet oh is this like a i don't know what happens if we put something in the toilet what uh what's supposed to happen <laughs> I don't know. They've, uh, they've upgraded this, too. This looks nicer in here than it used to. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, a customizer. Oh, wow. Look at this. I didn't even know they had this. Very cool. All right. Let's... D does this cost anything, or can we just do it? I like that helmet. That helmet's cool looking. Uh... Actually, I think I like this one better. Yeah, let's go with that helmet. Um, we can customize our build gun. Okay. Uh, let's go with the striped one. That's kind of cool. Our trinket, which is, I guess, what's on the build gun, right? Wait, where, where is the... Can I... Ro oh, yeah, here we go. Rotate. Where is the trinket? Where does it show up at? Oh, okay. It is on the build gun, um, but over here. I was looking down here. Uh, let's let's go with the fix it check mark, because why the hell not? <laughs> That's fun. Okay. Oh, and we can change our colors, too. Awesome. Oh, by the way, speaking of colors, uh, we are going to, uh, you know, in my last playthrough, I used kind of like a lime green as my primary color. Uh, what's this? A zoom? Oh, cool. Uh, anyway, uh, the plan for this playthrough is to use a dark blue as their primary color. Um, because blue is, in fact, in real life, my favorite color. So that's what we're going to go with for our main uh, build. And, of course, we can always change this stuff up later, too, as, as needed. Uh, let's do, like, blue, black, and... Can we...
let's see here. We got yellow. Let's actually save this. We're going to just call this uh, dark blue. And if we load that preset here, and then maybe change this one to yellow, kind of a blue and yellow theme. I want it to kind of be more, uh, almost more of an orangish like construction yellow. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay, do I, is it done? Do I have to hit save or anything? Guess not. The, the thing is though, is in single player, what, this doesn't really do a whole lot of good because we don't have a third person camera or do we? Hmm. That's probably may, maybe more for multiplayer. Let, let's just look at that really quick. Um, if we go to um, key bindings, to say anything about a third person camera. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see anything. So that, that's probably mostly for, for multiplayer. Anyway, that was a nice little pleasant side track, but we've got work to do. <laughs> So uh, let's let's make a little bit of concrete so we can do a concrete pull, and then I'm gonna actually set down multiple smelters. Um, so let's grab a concrete out of here, and I'm gonna turn the. Oh, actually, we can make that a constructor now, can't we? Yeah. Okay. Let's do. Uh, well, here. Let's just make the first batch of concrete by hand. It won't take that long. But then I'll set up a constructor to process this. Okay, we got that done. Now, we're going to disconnect that and we're going to put down a power pull. Uh, we need some rods and some more copper wire. All right, so what we're going to do is here, let's pick this up entirely. And we're going to want a power pull in front of here. And when then when we get the second power mass burger, we'll put another one in front of there. And then I want to put a pole here to go back that direction. And we're gonna go all the way back to the edge of the foliage here. Okay, good. Now, uh, tell you what, let's let, let's go grab um, our next batch of ores from our miners first. We'll only have to do this a few times until we can get the miners and the conveyor belt set up, which will happen quickly. Oh, so I guess that color change changed the theme of our machines too. Nice. I didn't notice that until just now. So that's not just our own character, that's like the whole shebang. Uh, another thing, just want to let everybody know, I, uh, I, w I will be efficient within reason, but I also am not in a hurry. I want to just enjoy the game and, and have fun with it. And so I'm not not necessarily at all going to be like min-maxing and doing everything 100% efficient either. Don't tell Fix that I said that, though, because, you know, they might fire me. But, yeah, we're just going to take time to stop and, and smell the flowers and enjoy the game and not get too hung up on being perfectly efficient. I will be inclined to be more efficient when it comes to setting up the factories themselves, though, and machines and making sure, you know, that's efficient. But I'm just talking about, you know, I, I'm not, this isn't a speed run for me to get through this as quickly as possible. That's really what I'm actually trying to say. 
let's grab all of that copper. Good. Okay, now we're going to go back and set up um, several smelters. To start processing all this ore. To start with, I want... Um... We'll do two smelters, one for iron, one for copper, and we'll do one constructor for limestone. So on the right-hand side, it shows us those are the items that we need. Let's make the cable. Um, we're going to need to make some screws to make two reinforced plate. Uh, oh, not enough space in inventory. Right, okay. Let's throw whatever wood we have in here. We do have to be mindful of power, obviously, um, as we go along. In other words, I, I could build 10 machines, but one little biomass burner, especially the one on the hub, is not going to power it. So we have to kind of scale all of that stuff up uh, together. Right. Okay. So let's make some plates so we can make two reinforced. Very good. Uh, all right. Um, let's make a little more cable and a little more wire. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll set up our concrete production over on this side. And again, remember, this is all temporary. Just to get us to tier four. Well, through tier four. So yeah, let's let's set it up here. So we'll run the conveyor line up through here. And we're gonna eventually want room for two constructors, but for now we're just gonna do one. So I think what we'll do is we'll put that constructor here. And we'll set this to concrete and put all the limestone in there. And then we'll run a power pole over to here. Later on, we'll put storage down, but I'm not worried about that yet. So here, uh, since the iron's right on the other side of that, that little rock outcropping thing, let's put our first smelter here. Set this to iron and put our iron ore in there. And then the copper we're going to set up over on this other side because the copper node is over this way. Um, I also want to keep... Let's see, where's that, that, that coal? So I think the pathway through here... So if we go and look west, right about maybe to the right of this tree, I want to keep that clear because we're going to eventually run a conveyor road through there. So we just got to be mindful of that is all. Okay, so we'll do copper. Uh, let's see, the copper node's right about there. So, yeah, let's do the copper over on this side. So we'll set our first copper smelter right about here. Set that to copper, put all the copper ore in there. And let's run a, a power line over here. Oh, I'm missing rods. Okay, let's go make a few more rods here. Okay, we'll put this power pole right there and get that going. Okay, let's look at our power. Okay, we're okay for the moment. Let's grab all the ingots out of here. Grab the concrete out of here. And, uh, yeah, we'll go back over and grab whatever copper ingots are done. Very good. Making progress. Making progress. But doing it at a nice leisurely pace. 
All right, what's our next upgrade here? Upgrade four, that's going to get us conveyor belts and some more inventory slots. It's a beautiful thing. Let's select that. Uh, we have enough concrete. Uh, we should have enough cable as soon as I make enough. Okay, there's our cable. And then we just need eight plates. Or no, sorry, we need 75 plates. Uh, okay, so I'm going to get started making plates. All righty, here we go. Hub upgrade four. Hub upgrade four, landing platform and utilities completed. Conveyor belts connect the output of one building to the input of another and transport resources. Due to past incidents, I have been asked to issue a clarification. Portable miners, obviously, do not have a connection for conveyor obviously. belts. Obviously. <laughs> there is nothing to suggest, visually or functionally, that they can be connected to portable miners. That's new. If this is something you struggle with, do not worry. Fix-It has alternative uses for all their pioneers. <laughs> Next objective, complete hub upgrade 5. Oh, I love those quips, man. They're awesome. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and queue up 5. Um, and that's going to get us our miners and our storage containers. Uh, those two things, a uh, miner in particular, that we really need. Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to grind towards this. We already got the concrete, and uh, I'm just going to get f uh, 50 cables made and 75 rods. Let's do it. All righty, let's do cables and rods. <coughs> Hub upgrade 5, power expansion completed. The miner, unlike portable miners, can be connected to conveyor belts and requires power to function. Caution, as you expand, the energy demand of your production may exceed the capacity of your power grid. The onboarding program was established because Fixit pioneers often experience memory issues after <laughs> planetfall. If you are experiencing nosebleeds, nausea, existentialism, existentialism. or an itchy scalp, there is no need for concern. <laughs> This should pass within five to seven work days. Oh my god. Next objective, complete hub upgrade six. I love it. It's so funny. Uh, okay, I think what we'll do is we'll leave that one with wood and we'll load this other one up with leaves. Uh, wait, no, I don't need that many leaves. The leaves burn a lot faster. I'm trying to, I, I want to save them, you know, for biomass when we can get to that point. We, don't, uh, we didn't get that yet, did we? I don't think so. Uh, no, not yet. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I think this is going to be a good place to um, end our first episode. Uh, we're off to a really good start. Just super enjoying 1-0. And uh, so, yeah, we'll wrap it up here, and then we'll pick up pretty much right where we left off. Uh, in between episodes, I'll probably go gather another batch of ore and just kind of, you know, keep all of these machines going and then, um, you know, start the next episode from there. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share out the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Goodbye.